Hey guys, we're looking at the OptiBike Rocky Mountain Commuter. And those are the Rocky Mountains in the background. We're at a, just a beautiful lake. This is Sloan Lake, right? Correct. Hanging out with Dusty from Best Electric Bikes USA here in Denver. Uh, and they actually have two of these bikes and it's so cool because the colors are slightly different. This one's a little bit more of a satin classic yellow, like school bus yellow. And then we have the high visibility yellow here with reflectors. I just love this, right? Look at this reflector on the battery casing, the side of the frame, some extra little strips up there on the head tube. We've even got reflectors on those plastic SKS fenders, reflective sidewalls on these really nice Schwabi Active Tour Plus. They have Active Line Puncture Guard, which is just really, really great. You don't want to have to change flats uh, when you're riding on a bike that's a little bit heavier and maybe go in the distance. And so that puncture protection is going to help you. But if you do, if, if something does go wrong, they actually have quick release on the front and rear. Pretty standard setup here. I love that it's got hydraulic disc brakes, Tektro 160 millimeter rotors, front and rear, three finger adjustable reach levers with motor inhibitors. So at any time, whether you're using the throttle or pedal assist, you can override that by just squeezing the brakes. Again, the fenders are going to keep you dry. And then they've got that little rubber pad. So if you're turning, and maybe you got a big foot and you kind of clip it or maybe you go off a bigger curb or something the fenders are going to hold up really well and they're really wide here's some more of those reflectors in the rear red they've got independent lights which are pretty nice but it means they don't run off the main battery pack so independent they're from surface and you just hold down that power button for a second this one has a couple different modes of blinking which i really appreciate they're both rechargeable here's the the surface front light you can take them off pretty easily as well there's like a little tab underneath you press down and slides right off i appreciate rechargeable i appreciate removable the display is not removable but it does swivel a little bit to reduce glare i think they've done a great job with the cockpit upgrading to metropolis swept back more of like a comfort riser handlebar but still relatively narrow and a little bit more active it's not like a cruiser style bar that's just really big um, check out that stem 45 degree angle 100 millimeter length five spacers 10 millimeter nicer cane crank headset sealed bar ball bearings inside so it's just a little bit nicer everything on this bike um, it just it's it's pretty integrated i suppose the battery does stand out a little bit but the positioning of it is low and center right where you want it and the motor is just super hidden it just completely hides behind this fsa chain ring 42 teeth right there um i don't know i look at a bike like this and I just think like convenience. You've got a bike that comes with everything. They've already thought through the different options. They're a bike company, so they've gotten better pricing and they've made sure everything fits. I haven't had a lot of rattling going on with those fenders. They've chosen to use Topeak and they have this awesome slide rack so you can push down on this little tab right here and then slide it backwards like this and it just pops right off. The rack is rated up to about 65 pounds. 30 kilograms, whereas a lot of other racks are rated just to 25. And this bag, when you unzip the sides, there are panniers that fold down and then they, they don't touch your wheel or your fender because this rack has a, like a pannier blocker on each side. There we go, we're locked and loaded. And I wanna try to demo that for you. Check it out, right? So you could really fill these things up and then the panniers also have a little reflective stripe on them. They've got a bottle holster in the rear, which I really appreciate. You might get thirsty when you're commuting and you know they didn't have room for bottle cage bosses here on the frame because I think they went with more of a slope top tube. It is reinforced, so it's not gonna have frame flex. They've got internally routed cables for part of it. Nice quick disconnects, pretty easy to access as well. And I like that the kickstand is mounted far enough back that it's not gonna collide with the pedals. Like there's just, everything kind of works on this bike. You are paying a little bit more. This thing's $39.95. It comes with a year long comprehensive warranty. OptiBike has been selling bikes since around 2007 when they were doing a lot of custom work. And they still sell these super high end, like they almost look like motocross electric bikes or something. And I was talking with the founder, Jim Turner, and he's like, yeah, you know, I started development on the first bikes way back in 1996. And we were packing our own lithium ion batteries. We're one of the first companies. Everything was like handmade here in America because they just didn't have any choices. But with some of their newer, like all road models and the Rocky Mountain Commuter, they're using stuff that's a little bit more off the shelf because it's just like, well, it's cheaper. It allows them to hit those lower price points and it's working pretty well. I don't see this particular hub motor very frequently and I don't really even know the brand. You know, it sounds like Jim was sourcing stuff to be a little bit more custom. Now uh, the size on this battery pack is 37 volts, 11.6 amp hours. So it's, you know, 450 watt hours ish. It works, it gets the job done. You can charge it on or off the frame. And the charger is 
let's see, I think it's just a two amp charger, pretty standard. I like that that rubber piece fits in easily. I haven't had an issue with that. It's got a little LED charge level indicator built right in on the top. And then if you wanna take it off, you just use this key, insert, twist, and it comes up, but it, it's pretty close to that cable. So you kind of have to tip it out to the side a little bit like that. And you could take it and maybe charge it off the bike if you want to. There's even an on off switch, which is kind of nice. So if you know you're not going to be using the bike for a long time, it might be a good idea to, to put it in the off mode. I would check on it though every month or two, because as the power drains slowly, it can damage the cells if it gets all the way completely expired. Um, also, extreme heat and extreme cold can be hard on these lithium-ion battery packs. So again, 5.6 pounds on this. It's got a little handle. It gets the job done. I, I have heard, you know, these, there's these pins right here and they're kind of spring-loaded. And I've heard that over time, I don't know if it's rust or just gunk that can get built up in there, but they can kind of firm up. So you might want to use some sort of cleaner or, you know, chime in on the forums or the comments if you've had this issue. I'm, I'm talking about another kit, actually. Jason from Electric Bike Outfitters, he sells a battery pack very similar. He was like, yeah, you know, if those things get locked up, then it can kind of push in on the uh, receivers on the battery. And it's just something that's potentially a little more sensitive. So I can't say for sure or not whether that's the case with this bike. Jim didn't mention anything. They have the warranty and they do have a handful of dealers, but it sounds like OptiBike is doing uh, more direct and they used to be in Boulder, Colorado, but they moved to Peonia, which is up in the mountains like near Vail and just really, you know, beautiful locations. It's a multi-generational company at this point because Jim started it, but both of his sons help out with the company now too. Um, and they're just real friendly. You can call up, you can talk to Jim, get his feedback as I did. And I, I love that. I really appreciate it. The frame only comes in one frame size, but again, it's dialed in to be upright, relatively comfortable. It feels great to me. They've got this surface, again, same as the lights, RX, like a really comfortable oversized saddle with rubber bumpers, 30.4 millimeters on that seat post. So if you wanted to, you could put a suspension post on there, like a thud buster, a body float, if you're really going the distance. And then up here with that swept back bar, they've got these nice ergon, these are the GP1 locking with the, the half twist access here. So it's it's set up with nice components that are designed to work with the electric bike part. Um, they've also got a little mirror here and there's supposed to be a bell. It's not on this one, but they've got it over here. Just a, just a regular kind of a basic flick bell, but nice to have. Again, turnkey, like there's no choices that you have to make. You just, you get the bike, you're ready to go. I like the suspension fork too. It's SR Suntour XCR. It has 32 millimeter stanchions. So they're a little bit thicker. Compression adjust with lockout and then preload on that side. So if you're a little bit heavier, you can turn up the preload and then, you know, get decent travel without bottoming out. Coming back to the tires, they've got a decent range. Um, you know, the tire pressure can be adjusted to a little bit lower if you're someone who's lightweight like me, 35 to 70 PSI. So there's a, there's a good range and they're 26 by two inches. I think it's a good balance between efficient tread and something that's really aggressive. You could actually take this bike off-road on a trail, maybe some packed earth or just a gravel road and, and still not have to worry about losing traction as much. I, I feel like it's a good, it's a happy medium because when you're on the middle, it's like a solid rubber stripe. Um, so that's something I think about. I also like that the rims are black, that the spokes are black, 32 hole. Um, yeah, I don't know, back to the motor on this side again. If I take a couple steps back, the bike's looking good. Again, well balanced, very, very visible. And that's, that's really what you want. Uh, I think that's a pretty good roundup, but I wanna pass it over to Dusty and see if he has anything else to say. You know, you've been listening to me carrying this brand for a while and you've even got like a little video playing in the lobby of OptiBike stuff. What do you think about the company? Um, they've been great. Uh, like I said, Jim Turner is a super nice guy. He's always, almost always available whenever you call if yeah. you have some questions about it. And uh, just all of his stuff just seems to be really, really well made and, and fun to ride. Mm -hmm. I would say this is this is probably the most similar to a regular bicycle feel. So if you're that person that I don't like that, uh, you know, the maybe the, the pedigo feel or something that pushes you along just on its own without you doing a whole lot, um, this it makes you feel a lot more engaged. Yeah. Um, it's very well balanced and, uh, you know, the only difference that this feels like versus a regular bike most of the time is, is the fact that you're now going, you know, 2025 20, where you might be going like 15 on a normal bike. Yeah, and you don't have to go as fast. You know, there are those different levels of assist. Jim was telling me on the phone that a lot of people ride in just like the 15 mile per hour range because it gives you better range. So I estimate the range on this bike between 20 and 60 miles. Really depends on 
which level of assist you're using and how active you are pedaling. It is a cadence sensor, so you really don't have to push that hard, uh, but it does empower the motor depending on what gear you're in. So if you're in a high gear and you're, you're going fast and you slam on the brakes for like a stop sign and then you try to use the throttle, first of all, the throttle's only up to 300 watts whereas the motor is rated up to 500. So I asked Jim about that. He's like, yeah, we just, you know, want to encourage people to pedal a little bit more. And we also don't want to strain the motor with people using just the throttle. So they purposely limited the throttle to 300 watts. Um, and I thought that was kind of interesting, but it, coming back to the gears, it's like, you probably want to pedal for a second, switch down to those lower gears, try not to mash when you switch the gears and then empower the motor again. It, like you're saying, it's like a regular bicycle. If you stop in the high gear, you're going to be struggling a little bit to get started. For sure. Okay, so the first thing to do once the battery's mounted, it's all charged up, is press this little power button here. The display comes to life. It's a pretty nice display, actually. It's slim, uh, but easy to read. It's a little bit larger, kind of taller. The button pad is relatively easy to reach, but the gears are, they're twist shifted versus like triggers. And, and that's kind of nice because it cleans up the cockpit. Um, it's also pretty intuitive. You twist down for those higher gears, like going faster, and then twist up for the easier gears. Anyway, the button pad itself, I have noticed that this plastic cover piece can kind of get, see how it's coming back a little bit like that? If you snag it on like a shirt sleeve or jacket, those, those plastic pieces can get bent up. Thankfully, you can replace it if that happens, but I just try to help you prevent that. So we've got a speed readout, we've got a battery infographic with five ticks, 20% increments. It starts in pedal assist level one, but you can take it all the way down to zero if you want. And then you just all the way up to five, that's the highest level, that's where I'm gonna start. And then we've got some trip stats at the bottom. If you press the power button here, it cycles through. So we go to average speed, max speed, and then current speed. And down at the bottom, we go from trip to odometer and time, like a timer. If you wanna clear those, you just press a plus and minus simultaneously for a second. If you want to get the backlight on the display, you hold the plus button and that you can't really see it, but it's, it looks really nice. And then the minus button uh, puts it into walk mode. So that could be handy if you got a flat tire or maybe you're in a park like this and you know, you just feel like maybe it's more appropriate to walk the bike versus ride it. But today we're going to ride it. We're going to go do a little bit of off-roading. I want to show you how powerful this thing is. Um, and by the way, if you want to do some settings, you double tap the power button and then this is where you can change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour or go through and get to like, there's a password and you could change the top speed a little bit. Okay, so here we go, I'm gonna start pedaling. Feeling pretty good, you know, I'm very upright, comfortable body position, not having too much of a difficulty pedaling even in the grass in a higher gear. You ready to go, bud? Sweet. Dusty is a little bit taller. You're like 6'2", right? 6'3", uh, yeah. 6'3". <laughs> and he's, you know, you can see he's not having to lean forward too far. His back and neck look pretty relaxed. And you're just a little bit more visible too. You can spot cars and they can see you in this body position. Also feeling very stable. Just the slightly wider tires, maybe the way the fork's set up. Stop signs don't seem like such a such a big deal when you're on an e-bike because you can just use that throttle, get yourself a little bit of speed starting so you don't have to strain your knees and then pedal away. Go ahead and shift gears here. There we go, we're up to 20, 22. I'm in the highest gear now. And just about 25, there it is. There's our top speed. Being able to go a little faster is nice if you've got a long commute. And just remember to shift those gears down when you get to the stop sign, make it easy for yourself to get going again. As 
you can see, there's a little bit of delay there when you stop pedaling. Um, it kind of fades out versus being as instantaneous, but you can override that with either brake lever. So see, the motor won't even start when I'm pulling the brakes. Okay guys, you're connected to the seat post, and from here you can see that 42 tooth chain ring. Uh, there's no cover, there's no guide or anything, but it's pretty clean, it's lightweight. They cut the fender, created a little bit of a gap there. So I haven't had any chain slap. I really haven't had any issues. The drivetrain itself is pretty good, SRAM NX. 11 sprockets and it's 11 to 40 tooth, so you have a, a really big range for climbing or for hitting some of those higher speeds. Again, up to 25 miles per hour. OptiBike can configure this as class one, 20 mile per hour pedal assist only, class two, with throttle up to 20 miles per hour. That's kind of the setting we have now. Or class three where it goes up to 25. So th that's great considering there are different laws and different states and some people want to go slower. You can actually configure some of that from the menu if you want to. From here, you'll be able to listen in and see how loud that motor gets when we pedal along. And also listen for how sensitive it is. It, I, I was told by Jim Turner, the founder, that there's like 48 magnets in there, or a combination of sensors that give it a really smooth and responsive cadence. Um, you do have to shift gears pretty frequently in order to change the speed on this bike. It's more like a manual transmission, and that's sort of the case for most mid-drives. I just love how small, compact that, that motor is on this frame. It really it just hides, looks great, and I think that's it. Let's do it. I'm going to be pedaling along in the highest level of assist to make it uh, as pronounced and zippy as possible to demonstrate. Very good stopping power. Those Tektro 160 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes, smooth, relatively quiet. You might hear the trunk bag rattling around a little bit, but the motor, it's, it's, I, I like it. Um, it's definitely grown on me, up to 40 Newton meters of torque. Jim said that nominal and peak power output is around 500. So that's kind of interesting because a lot of times companies will maybe exaggerate where it's like 500 to a thousand or something, but this thing's, it's powerful. It just, again, it depends on what gear you're in. You're not gonna be able to climb if you're in the highest gear. You have to shift down to those lower ones. And there's no shift detection, but the motor's smooth enough that I haven't been mashing gears too much. Just gotta be thoughtful about how you do it. And then I might, you know, coming back to that right chain stay, I might just take a clear piece of like packaging tape or maybe get an official slap guard online and just, just to protect the frame because this paint is so beautiful and it's not scratched or anything yet, but I'm just thinking, depending on the environments that you're riding in, keep the chain from chipping it. From here, you can see that motor turning again. Um, and I've asked Dusty to ride nearby so you can see him riding as well. Uh, you might hear a little bit of rattling because that trunk bag, but these fenders have been doing pretty well and they're extra wide. So it looks like you'd get plenty of coverage on those wet days. I also want to comment on the pedals. They're plastic, but they've got these really big pins. Um, just good traction. like. I like the accessories they've they've chosen here. We actually got to 25 miles per hour. I'm, I'm in the highest gear, which is 11 in the back, but uh, 11 tooth. 
it's pretty satisfying. Definitely smooth, like steady jumps as you shift gears. It's, it's working. I'm, I'm impressed. You do hear the motor. It's a little bit more of a whine, especially at the higher cadence, but it's not the loudest motor I've ever ridden either. It's, it's an interesting compromise. Jim was saying it's about eight and a half pounds for that. Um, which is which is kind of average. Hey guys, we're backstage. This is where all my gear was laid out. I was looking at the bikes with Dusty and we just got back from the ride. What were you telling me about the handlebars? Um, yeah, so for, for t taller people specifically. Uh, it's like very, my buddy here, right? 6'3". <laughs> it's, it's very very helpful um, knowing that there is, is an option for a flat bar, either if that's more of your preference and how it looks um, or you need a little more room in the cockpit. Um, it's certainly a, a helpful option. and. Since they do custom make these to order, um, that is just one of the options that you can choose. Okay, so he's saying like on the, the other bike, the Pioneer All Road, it's a little more like a trail bike maybe and it's got a flatter bar. I like the upright ergonomics of this, but you know, these are all traditional bike parts. You can also lower the handlebar, you could flip the stem to make it more aggressive, get the flat bar like Dusty's saying, and because they custom make it, you could order it in class one or class two, class three. That's that's kind of neat, and it seems like I mean you were just selling one of these today, so this is a pretty popular bike for you guys. Yeah, we've uh, we've already moved a few just because uh, like I said those people that are wanting that traditional bicycle feel, this uh, this meets a lot of those needs, and then with all the extra features already added on, um, it's kind of a slam dunk. Nice man. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your help, Dusty. You're welcome, Corey. I think that's kind of it, you guys. Hope you had fun. Always fun to see the Rocky Mountains, and then there's Denver way off in the distance just a beautiful time of year springtime the flowers a lot of new development going up in this neighborhood for the full written review i'll see you back at electricbikereview.com i'll have the standover height the reach the width all those other specs i tried to do i welcome your feedback in the comments or in the forum for optibike have fun out there ride safe thanks dusty